Grade 12s and welcome to our show today. My name is Helen DeVette and that must mean you're watching a revision show for Life Sciences. And of course, none of this would be possible without our generous sponsor, Liberty. Liberty, thank you for all you have been doing for the past 30 years or more and now for our current matrix. You are in it with them and, and we're all very grateful to you. Of course, it's not just today's show, Grade 12s, that you can revise your life sciences with. Why don't you download the Tenfold Education app? And in that way, you've always got a teacher in your pocket ready to help you with something that is just causing you a little bit of a problem. You can also catch us on our YouTube channel at Mindset Learn. So there's a host of resources for you to make use of as you hit this very stressful time of your lives when everything relies on that final examination. So if you know that you are going to be taking a test or an exam, doesn't it always help to know what other people have done wrong? Because you can always learn from the mistakes of others. So today's show is going to focus on common exam mistakes in life sciences. And that might seem that, how, how do I determine what are those common exam mistakes? Well, I want to let you into a secret. There is a wonderful document that you can actually go and find on the, the education um, website on www.education.gov and you can find this document. It is the National Senior Certificate 2022 Diagnostic Report. And what this document does is it breaks down all the errors that seem to crop up again and again and again in the exam papers as the markers were marking them last year. So what did the examiners actually say about last year's papers? And more importantly, what can you learn from their comments? So I went to this report for the Life Sciences Paper 1 and Paper 2 and I dug out the common mistakes and I thought that what I would do is in today's lesson focus on the common mistakes for Paper 1 and take you through other people's mistakes so that you don't make the same mistakes. Alright, so shall we get started then? What is our first thing that last year's examiners picked up as being a problem? Well, the first thing, misinterpretation of instructional verbs. Now, you might be saying, hold on a bit, this is supposed to be life sciences, not language. So, what do they mean here? Well, you know that a verb if I was your language teacher, I would tell you is a doing word, like run, sit, play. Those are verbs. They tell you what you should be doing. And in terms of an examination question, an instructional verb tells you what you should be doing to answer the question appropriately. All right. And students are misinterpreting, which is a kind way of saying they're getting it wrong. They are not doing what the instructional verb tells them to do. And the common mistakes, I've listed the words here. Sometimes a question will tell you to name something. Now, if I ask you, what is your name? You're going to give me one or two words. You're not going to 
explain in a whole paragraph who your parents are, who your cousins are. You're just going to tell me your name. My name is Helen DeVette. Now in an exam, they ask you to name the hormone or name the part of the eye that does something. And when we have to name, we are essentially just writing down one or two words. We are simply giving the name of something. So why don't we try this? Why don't you shout it out, okay? What is the name of the organ in the eye that is responsible for refracting light onto the retina? What is the name or name the part of the eye? And that answer will then be lens. That's it. You don't have to give me anything else. Name the hormone that is produced and by the pituitary gland and has an effect the ends of long bones. And if we have to name that hormone, it is growth hormone. So that's all that's required. Don't waste time writing out long paragraphs when you are simply instructed to name something. Now, state is very similar to name, but very often name, we're going to refer to a thing like the iris of the eye, the lens of the eye, growth hormone, all right? We're naming a thing. If we're stating something, it might actually take us a few words. So we would be stating the function of some part of the eye. State the function of the tympanic membrane. So here it's not just naming, which took us one or two words. Now we're just going to give a few words. What is the function of the auditory canal? And we would answer in a few words to transmit sound waves from outside the ear to the tympanic membrane. So we also haven't really elaborated at all, but we've used more than one or two words. We've used a few words and stated what the function was. State why meiosis is important. It is a reduction division to counter the doubling effect of fertilization. It introduces genetic variation. So we're writing maybe in a sentence, but just a few words where we're stating something. Now we move up to describe. And if we were talking about verbs, well, when we describe, we're going to be saying how those parts of the body are working or how a particular system looks or functions. So here we're going to be using sentences. And our sentences are going to describe maybe a process, maybe a structure, but we're going to be giving far more than one or two words, far more than a few words. We're now going to be writing sentences. So to describe what kind of a person you are, you're not just going to say male. All right, that's naming. We're going to try and say that we enjoy doing this or we have brown hair. And we're going to start unpacking a couple more facts in sentences. Sometimes if a question says to you to describe something and it doesn't say write a paragraph and you know that a paragraph you've got to write with continual sentences, one sentence following the next, 
in a little paragraph, sometimes when you have to describe something, it's quite nice to describe your things or order of a process in bullet points. So let's say the question says, describe a reflex arc. You're going to say that the first thing that exists is a stimulus. Something provides a stimulus from the environment. For example, a thorn on the ground is a stimulus. That stimulus is going to be detected by a receptor, such as the pain or pressure receptors in your foot. And the receptors are part of a sensory neuron. And so we can describe not just naming, we're going to use a couple of sentences to describe each of these parts of a particular process. So I think you can see from name to state to describe, we're becoming more complicated. But it's pretty simple just to describe something. It's there, it's a process, it's a structure. We're going to say what it looks like or what, how it happens. And now we step up to explain. We've got to use sentences here. When we explain something, we're not just describing a process or describing a structure. Now we are including how it works or why something happens. So we've moved from a name to a statement to a simple description and now when we're explaining something, we are unpacking a process and we are explaining why something is the way it is. Explain the process of negative feedback, all right, as it applies to maybe thermoregulation. And so we've got to explain what we mean by negative feedback, that negative feedback is a mechanism or a system that exists to control levels in the body. And because it's negative feedback, we know that usually one action that brings about an increase in something, negative feedback has to produce an effect that creates the opposite. In other words, a decrease in something. So if your temperature is increasing, the body has to put in place some mechanism to decrease your temperature, such as sweating. So when we explain, it's a little bit more tricky than just describing, and it's much more difficult than just naming. Naming, you should know those terms easily, off by heart. Describing, you've really got to now understand what it is that you named and with explanations, you've got to take it that step further and you are really showing your marker or your examiner that you understand what is happening. Some more misinterpretation of instructional verbs. Analyzing means we have got a structure or a process and we've got to analyze it. We've got to break it down into its components. Predicting, we're going to say this is the current situation. We are saying what is going to happen sometime in the future. Or we've got a situation, we're going to set up some kind of experiment. What do we predict the outcome is going to be? And our good old favorite, compare. 
Compare is to take two things or two processes, two structures, and we've got to say how they are similar to each other as well as how they are different. So a, a comparison is not simply a description. We are honing in or focusing in on how these processes or things are the same or similar and how they are different. And when it comes to comparing differences, we very often compare our differences in a table. Don't forget that. All right, let's now move on and pick up the next thing that our examiners said was a problem for many of the students. And we're going to now focus on commonly confused terms, terminology. Life sciences is difficult because it tends to go in and, and use complex words and each of the terms has got a very specific meaning. So after our short break, we're going to come back and look at some words that maybe sound the same or look the same in terms of spelling, but they mean very different things. Don't run away, but why don't you go and get a piece of paper and a pen so we can jot down these commonly confused terms when you come back after the ad break. 